What's up everybody? Tom here with another video. What goes down must go up, yeah? Yesterday on the stock market, we saw some ripping trades and some massive gains on tech. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at our S&P 500 technical analysis along with our NASDAQ, Bitcoin, Tesla, gold, and more to try to find out what just happened and whether this can be sustained. Is this another buy the dip, sell the rip situation? Stay tuned. All right, guys, well, as I said, massive gains on certain stocks, and there is no stock quite like Tesla in this market. Look at this, 19.64% with a further gain after hours coming through. It's just unbelievable how much Tesla can move considering its market capitalization size. Yesterday was a different day. We saw banks actually getting hit. Some of the stocks that have been doing well recently, like Disney, moving down as people probably rotated a little bit out and said well you know hang on a second there might be some value in some of these tech stocks nvidia rose eight percent microsoft apple it was really just a cross the board fang semiconductors every hyper growth kind of tech area was moving let's have a look at the nasdaq and just see the outperformance here it is the nasdaq ripped four percent into the close a strong day there and at the same time we did see some declines in things like the dow jones which wasn't that strong spx which was up 1.39 led by tech and then the russell everything sold a little bit into the close and we'll talk about the technical analysis levels here in just a few moments because you'll see that it did hit technical resistance on many of the indices but overall it was all tech consumer discretionary the two beaten down sectors with the two value sectors, energy and financials, leading the downward side. Let's get stuck into our technical analysis straight away just to see what's happening with the markets. Well, the volatility index for the S&P 500 remained relatively high. Yes, it went down 5.65% to 24, but it's still quite high. Now, if this can sustain, if we can see recovery through the tech, I guess you will expect this to continue to come down to the 20 level but it may not be over yet in terms of volatility. And we'll go through to show you why. Dollar index is the next big thing that you wanna be looking at. If the dollar index is ripping and going up, that usually means risk off for the markets. And this is something that we've been looking at together with these bond yields to try to find out whether these are affecting the market and how we can tell. Dollar index was down yesterday. You can see this big red candle but it may just be returning back to the 9160. And if you look at things like the weekly charts for dollar index, you'll instantly see that 9160 is basically where the 20 exponential moving average is. Have a look here, 20 exponential moving average, the previous points of resistance along the selling side may now act as support. So it may not be over for dollar index, it's just having a breather after a massive move. Continue to watch this space live with us every session open we'll be doing wednesday open tonight so definitely subscribe if you're wanting to come and check out the live markets bitcoin another one that is pushing the boundaries of the last couple of weeks we've got bitcoin look at this 54,996 live during the recording of this stream we're testing 55 in fact we just hit it wow 55,000 is a major break zone for Bitcoin. If it breaks through this level, you'll notice over here, it was a point of resistance after that initial flash crash and then it dumped again. If it breaks through here, where does it go? Well, it makes logical sense now to move towards the 58,283 level. So for Bitcoin, it could be a very nice next 24 hours. It all comes down to can it hold above here on a significant time frame? but the price action looks good. The series of higher lows looks good. You can see that here, little higher lows on the smaller timeframes coming through. It's looking like a bonanza on crypto. Other ones to watch, things like DOT as well. I noticed this symmetrical triangle last night when we we're doing analysis, Litecoin. So many cryptocurrencies are coming up to key criticals. Even XRP, 50 cents is the key critical with some nice technical analysis together with that. So lots and lots of stuff in the crypto space. Be careful as always, but good technicals coming through. Gold, another one that's benefiting from the dollar index falling down. But I think gold's just hit our technical first level of resistance. So we've been bearish on gold and we got bearish down to the 1676 zone and it was almost picture perfect. And a few people messaged me last night and said they were doing something very similar with similar analysis. Congratulations to them because we had the resistance body closes. 
We had the support weeks through here. We knew that this was our trend line coming off the lows and the previous low in 2020. And it all synergized together to be a very good level to take profit if you're in the shorts. Congratulations to all shorters. Now we have a daily engulfing candle to the upside. That's a pretty bullish type of candle. If we consider what happens next, I usually like to see a little bit of structure formation. So what I expect is I did think the 1720 would be resistance, previous support, previous resistance, and just above this high. So now the market may retest the lows, then move up. And if it got through after that, I'd be way more happy to long gold from that position from a technical structure standpoint. It's all about not trying to catch the falling knife. And while we do have for the first time a new higher peak than it was over here, it's just not enough right now for me to say I'm excited about gold from a trade perspective to the long side. I'd like to see more structure formed in here and we'll continue to cover this story. Another reason why that is, is because of silver. If you take a look at where silver is in the market, silver is bulling as well. It's doing really well, coming off the 25 base. But look at this, our previous trend line is now gonna act as resistance level. And if you have a look here, what is this? The 20 and the 50 exponential moving averages are kissing each other on the exact same point. So they are literally sitting right on the trend line and these will act as most likely some form of dynamic resistance. And we may see this bring up, sell down, back to 25s. Be very careful around this zone with silver right now in the markets. Tesla, an amazing return yesterday. As we mentioned, it was 20%. In terms of the pre-market and aftermarket, it's actually trading at 688.90 after the post. Now, if it can hold this zone, that will be incredibly bullish for Tesla. There's a few bullish things that happened yesterday. First bullish thing that happened, it got through the 20 exponential moving average on the downside. I mentioned this was a key point. We also broke through the resistance here at the same time with the close, very significant. Instantly into where ARK was purchasing the first time and that became support, this 670, 680 area. And now we find our market stuck at another key point of resistance. And this will come down to whether the index can blow through certain levels. QQQ, absolutely the S&P 500, they've all hit critical resistance, they've all hit their previous resistance support zones, and now the market must decide whether they wanna take some profit from those mega gains yesterday, or they're ready to push it to the next level. And we'll have to look at some ways to confirm that later in this video to find out more. So Tesla right on resistance, it's really the indexes that I think will push this one either way for now. Let's talk about some indices, QQQ to start with, the NASDAQ, what's going on with the NASDAQ guys? It has hit the resistance here of the 20 exponential moving average on the four hour. And at the same time, it's gone to the 310. Now you'll notice the post market action here is 312. That's great and it's showing closure above, but it needs to be sustained into another open. So if you look at the US 100, it's sitting right on 12,800, previous support, previous resistance area. This doesn't show us yet that the market is ready to move really up. Now we close above this, where do we go? back into these highs. That is the key, 324. But with after a move like that, many day traders may not be holding their positions and they may take profit tomorrow after they find out more information. If we open round here, I could see some early morning profit taking, a potential dip followed by a pull up. Remember, it's all about going down like this, making a new peak, and that gives us that lightning bolt effect of a trough, a peak, a higher trough, and a higher peak, which signifies a change of trend on that significant time frame. Some people have been calling double bottoms down here. I think that is valid. If you go to something like a one hour chart, you'll instantly know that even on the QQQ, more on the NASDAQ, which we'll see in a second, you had basically two lows forming around that 300, 297 area. You had the resistance or the intervening peak, and we broke through that zone with a nice close. So it's very convoluted right in this space right now. Any further bullish momentum closes up signifies to me the 325. So it's really at the zone. It looks like it's the buy the dip and potentially sell the rip in the morning and then the follow through occurs, but we'll have to find out more as we see the pre-market shape up. US 100, here it is. This is 
the more heavy structure because it trades all sessions. You'll notice the support down here at 12.3. You'll notice the resistance around 12.8 and it's right in that noise area at this point. So we've got supports, we've got resistance. Next move up, just like the QQQ, back into these resistances up here. And the beautiful thing about this is it proofs from a technical perspective. So I talk about this a lot. Proofing is key in the markets. If you take the distance, and you can extrapolate that out and it hits the previous resistance zones or right around there, it means the market has well thought out these levels and it is acting technically. And when the market acts technically, then you have the chance to trade it that way and of course garner some success. So I like what's happening here on the US 100. It needs to do another green day to force it back up to this level. And then once we get past there, it really could be all about the 14,000 plus for the NASDAQ. All of this downward pressure would be broken at that point. The double bottom would be in, the next high would be in, it would be on like Donkey Kong, yeah? 3,900 resistance met by the S&P 500 and sold off from. This was the critical zone because energy and financials did move down and other sectors were kind of flat to not that great. The S&P 500 wasn't the strongest index yesterday. The actual NASDAQ was. And I continue to think this will happen if we see this recovery. A slight rotation out of financials. Everyone was getting into financials and it was all so great and glorious. The problem is, is that many financials have run very, very hard and they don't necessarily justify it like, let's say, the tech is from the hyper growth perspective. Be careful here, we're in month five of our recovery. So that means that we only had six months. Everyone's writing about it now. I believe financials are getting close to the peak in the rotation in the indices. And there is always a rotation. We talk about that a lot on the live streams as well. It's really good to understand that that is what goes on. From the S&P 500, I could see the 3,900. If it gets broken, we go towards the 3,930, which is these previous peaks. And we clear through that back to the trend line. I say most likely smash the 4,000 and move through to maybe a 40, 50 going into line with this trend line that's been so good for so long for a take profit zone. It's really critical again that the market finds further recovery today in the Wednesday session. Let's take a look at what's going on here on the one hour. Is there any clear support resistance zones or anything like that? I think really just that 3820, 3800 zone is interesting. The 3860 on the futures around there is a zone, 3864. But from the real market, it's just 39 and 3820. And anything in between is really more noise than it is technical levels. GME and AMC, I know the crowd that's been watching us lately has been very interested in these. Both ripped yesterday, very nice returns here. 26.94% up for GME, up $52 at a 253. It's up after hours as well um, at that level. And if we think about what's the next zone or resistance, there's a 275 up here, previous support, previous resistances. It might be some struggles around this zone. But if this squeeze really gets started, I can't believe I'm saying this, it could be possible it goes back to that 350. That would be absolutely phenomenal and, and insane. I didn't think we'd be going back to these types of squeezes anytime soon. AMC post-market, you'll see very strong, 1096, clearing many zones yesterday that we had. We had our 1050 being the resistance we thought we would get to once we broke through. We watched this one live. It was a beautiful uh, breakthrough on the 15 minute. I know a lot of people were very hyped and excited about that. Well, rightfully so. It then moved strongly towards the 1050, hit that level, and then next up, maybe the 12. I think there'll be strong resistance at the 12, and you need to be careful at that level and at that zone. All right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to subscribe, hit that like button, come join us live today for the Wednesday Open. It's going to be massive. We're getting started around three hours before the market open. So join us there and have some fun with the community. Bye for now, guys.